ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. Contestant number one. journey of health with you. I thought it was an absolutely amazing speech and it was so cool to hear your experiences, especially the way that you told them. Right off the bat you started off with health and I love that because it's broad and you pointed out that it's broad which I think is great because immediately we're drawn to the attention that you're going to take this in a couple different directions which is a perfect way to start. But the other thing that I really love that you did right away at the beginning was your hand gestures. They were big, they were very showy. And I almost saw it, as you started to talk more, I saw it as more of a foreshadow because you started talking about your hands later. So by doing the big hand gestures, you're introducing us to the fact that your hands are going to be an important part of the speech later. On the other side, I thought that some of the gestures were just a little bit demonstrative, almost, you know, a, a lot of circles, and that's not all that natural when you're talking to a person on an individual basis. And so when you speak in a big room, sometimes those big gestures can be a little off-putting only because they're not natural. And so I think just maintaining some of the smaller gestures and not necessarily anchoring your arm, which you didn't do, but just less demonstrative. However, the movement I loved. You, you walked around the stage, which was amazing. You directed our attention. You held the ground. And I also think that one of the things that you can incorporate with your speech is as you move from point to point is to walk with it and let the words guide you in the direction that the speech is going. A lot of people sometimes will just start walking and, and then say the next point. But if you let the next point lead you in the direction, it feels different. It feels like a forward motion. Now, as far as the content of your speech, I thought it was absolutely amazing. You didn't, you didn't show us. You told us. And that's the main difference. There are a lot of opportunities for you to have that back and forth conversation that you had with your doctors. And that was the showing and not the telling. We could see that interaction see that dramatic moment. And what I really love is as it got further and further into the diagnosis and the symptoms, we could hear your voice get more trembly and more scared because that's what you felt at the time that that happened. So I really appreciated all of that and all of those key things within, within the speech. I think that what would make it really interesting is if, and you already have that nice narrative structure to it, that nice narrative flow, I think it would be to maybe even do a little bit more drama, a little more pause in between each one of those <laughs> symptoms and then each one of and then you finding out what happened is to draw it out just a little bit more and bring us even closer in with that voice and the, and the showing rather than tell. But as a whole, I thought it was amazing. And what I really loved at the end is from the beginning of the speech, you brought us on your journey and you gave us and you grounded us in a very relatable thing that all of us can understand. What you did at the end is you can tie it to something bigger, something a big social cause, something that you believe in, and something that you want us to walk away from. <coughs> what you kind of did is you said, Ben conmigo, and brought us along in your journey. Gracias. That was nice. <laughs> Judges fill out their ballots. Contestant number two. We were lucky to have a fabulous speech. Thank you so much, Jane, for that. 
one of the things we talk about in Toastmasters is catching the audience from the opening words. And I was caught right from the very beginning of this speech. One of the things that I thought was particularly excellent, one of the two things I'd like to highlight among the many that were fabulous, was the command of the stage and the presence. It was very deliberate in terms of walking to this area, talking to the folks out there, hi, and also not letting this area of the room be left out. Hi out there too. And there were fabulous gestures that didn't look forced, but that fit really well and accentuated the message of putting the luggage overhead, pulling the carpal tunnel braces on. That was fabulous, and it pulled us in. Because the second thing that really pulled me into the speech was the very personal story. A story about sadness and fighting against things and finding a way and trying to make it work and backsliding. And I think most of us have been there. And it pulled me in and I was cheering for Jane and I wanted everything to work out right. I wanted it to be a great story. And it was. And the speech would have been good if that's all that there had been to it. But it was a lot more. And that's what leads me to the two things that would have made it an even stronger speech for me. One of them is, I thought when it started it was going to be about a personal journey to health. And the opening seemed to say that, but it was a much bigger message. And, and it did start with the challenge about taking responsibility for your health. I sort of got lost in that because I got so caught up in the great storytelling. So if at the beginning it had said something like, I'm going to tell you about my story, I'm going to tell you what I realized, and then I'm going to give you tips, for me that would have let me follow along the speech better. The second thing was the time. Though I loved the personal stories, the tips, which were the call to action, I thought got a little short at the end. And a better balance would have made it an even stronger message for me. I loved the way it ended with a call for action. Every person in this audience knew what they could do to make their life better. They really can. We really can. I really can adapt and self-manage. I can take responsibility for my health. And you gave us three simple steps to do that. Know who you are, find your community, join Toastmasters. Works for speeching as well as health. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmasters. Contestant number three.
overall your organization as well as fabulous. You told us, you intrigued us with that question, who is responsible? And then you told us your personal story, plus you gave us facts and things that we could do ourselves. And then you called us to follow you. There are two things that I would suggest for next time. The first one being your eye contact. You looked around the room very well, but it seemed to glitter a little bit too much. When I was sitting at my table, I wanted you to stop on me. I wanted to the story you were telling to me today. And I think that that's very powerful for an audience to know that you're talking to them. And you can't make eye contact with every person, but you can pause a little bit more at that table to be able to feel more empathy. So that's one thing. The other thing is, you left us hanging. I wanted to know, how are you doing? Did, it, did all these drugs and everything you went through work? I know there's not always an ending to a story, obviously, but I wanted to know a little bit more about why should I because you look great. I assume things are good, but I don't know that. If you tell me, I will be more willing to run after you and talk more after you. <coughs> How can I do that to you? Because I need to take care of myself too. So all in all, great job. I love your variety of your voice, your gestures, the way you talked to us and told us your story. Contestant number four. George Deladuca, George Deladuca. Hi there. Hi. I'm a fan of this journey you took me on today, and I really appreciate that. Now, we'll tell us, and the guests, and that's beauty of communication, the ability to take us on a journey and to do it with Elan or Verb or whatever word you want to use with the dynamics that she had on the stage this evening. <clears throat> I'm a young man of 77, so I had, a, I had a personal challenge in the very first beginning. Okay? Our Toastmaster introduced your speech. The first thing I wrote down was, a journey to hell? <laughs> a journey to help? Question mark. Who's your opening comments that put the word health? Where it belongs. <laughs> and it gave me a chance to take a deep breath and say, all right, now I can know what I'm going to be really concentrating on. <laughs> and your dramatic gestures made a difference for me. I, again, I don't think I could stand on one leg very long. So that was a beautiful visual to where you were trying to go with this. Self-diagnosis, important. And you used good examples of where you were going with that self-diagnosis and the failures that would come. And then you had the diagnosis. And I appreciated the almost anger in how you were trying to address the diagnosis and the cure that he was going to try and give to you. Because you wanted to be yourself. You wanted to be in control. And yet, you realize that maybe I have to make some sort of change and compromise. And it was good that you had two definitions. Because the definitions provided us with a chance to figure out where you were trying to go. And this idea of ability to adapt and self-manage really took a good point. And then you had your three steps. And those are good. As I am focusing on all of the good points in the presentation, the one thing that I felt a little sensitive about was your stage motion. It's good to me from side to side. 
But I think motion like that needs to be a little more directed. And I was seeing just moving back and forth more than being a directed point in interstage movement. <clears throat> and the pacing, beautiful. When it had purpose. And when you were here, were you looking at the table? Or were you looking at the wall? So did we lose a little eye contact with the pacing back and forth? A question that only you can answer for me. This is a journey. Does the journey need to have an end? Perhaps. If it does, can you tell us what the end is? If it didn't, there's your chance for a really major change and improvement. So congratulations on asking me to come with you. Contestant number five. I think it's a perfect call to action that we take personal responsibility for our health. 